Well, hello. I'm back. On a solo endeavor. Uh, this will be another episode of the Husky Introvert Reliever. This would make a number two. Not what you're thinking. Episode two. Okay, just to clear that one up a little bit. Sorry, bad joke. <laughs> Maybe you laugh, maybe you didn't, maybe you're like cringing right now, you're going, ew, I deserve that. Uh, this is your husky, introverted believer, Ariel, Ariel Duran, uh, chiming in. As I promised, I mean, I said that I will be doing this at least two or, or once or twice a week. And uh, here I am on the same day that I recorded last week. And hopefully this is not so much of a downer, because last week, well, due to the nature of the situation that occurred on that day, it had to be a downer. Um, how am I feeling? Um, okay under the circumstances, I would say. Okay under the circumstances, because uh, circumstances are not ideal. Uh, what would be ideal circumstances for me? Um... Well, having my wife and daughter here, that would be, like, <laughs> first place. Um, what else would be ideal? Uh, not going through some of the stuff that I have to go through. Not because I want to. Not because I'm looking forward to it. But I have to go through these things. I have to. Not because my will is in it. Not because I'm looking forward to it. It's pretty much... In a way, against my will. <laughs> against what I really want to do, which is, like, create stuff. Like, uh, I'm not saying I'm the greatest artist I've ever lived, but I, I, I really like to create. Uh, I draw a little. Uh, I'm doing these podcasts now. That's another side of the creative. And I'm also doing a lot of a little other things on the side that I'm not going to talk about freely i mean i did mention a little bit of it on the husky by booze with jonathan on the last episode number 123 which is available right away you can download it and check it out no cussing we've been cuss free <laughs> we've been very 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 good boys uh, lately and uh not cussing uh so uh there's that although the other ones <laughs> Listen that at your own risk. <laughs> if you wanted to know if I'm a naughty boy, well, that you got all the evidence right there to catch me, cuff my hands, and take me to the paddy wagon or whatever. Anyway, uh, that's what I would like to do. I like create my stuff, do my stuff, do the things that I enjoy, the things that I love. But I'm currently in a position that uh, I don't wish to be. And I will not elaborate any further because we opened that can of worms. And, well, consequences and repercussions may apply. <laughs> uh, but not to sound like a downer, because, again, that's not the intention here to be the downer. But. The intention here is to uh, express myself, uh, talk about the veins of the, you know, the journey. I've said this before, uh, maybe not here in podcasts, but I've said it to the church group, uh, to the uh, Friday Night Live, a group that we go to church on Fridays, uh, which is kind of a, like an interactive Bible study where there's a subject brought into the, the to uh, the people who listen to it and we all chime in and give our opinions and our thoughts about it. It's a very interactive way and I like it. I like it a lot. And, uh, I remember one time where I, I took a little bit of a chime in into it. I said that it's not about the, the destination, it's about the journey. And well, uh, I, I have to apply that to myself now a little bit. Uh, I have to remi remind myself that the, the the destination is there. I mean, it's up for grabs. You know, when you ha you set up a course, 
to go someplace, for example, let's say uh, you want to go to New York City. Why would you go to, <laughs> go to New York City under the circumstances that it is now? That's a whole nother story by itself. But for the sake of illustration, for illustration's sake, let's say you want to go to New York City. Okay, so if you want to go to New York City, you already got your destination set up. But now you got to go through the journey. You got to go through the motions of, you know, setting up everything so you can go to New York City. So uh, for some people, that prep time is what they desire. That's the thing that they love the most. For some people, it's like, oh, God, this thing. Like, I, I, I dreaded it. Uh, I don't know why we always, when I was a kid, when we had to travel, either it was going to the States or going to DR, we always had to leave very, 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 <laughs> very early in the morning. And it always sucked for me because they always had to wake me up like around at five ish. And as a kid, you know, you really like your full hours of sleep. Well, I don't know about others, but I've always been a sloth. <laughs> I can't speak for everybody else. Maybe your sleeping habits are a little better than mine. Mines are not existing right now, by the way. Thank you, sleep apnea. Thank you, overweight. Uh, <laughs> but as a kid, I mean, I, I, I adored sleeping, which I miss dearly right now. Anyways, uh, and when they had to wake us up so damn early in the morning, I was like, oh, man. And I hated it. There's some people that probably like that. Oh, yeah, I get to wake up early in the morning. To those of you, uh, I, I have no nice Christian words to say to you. So I'll just keep my mouth shut and just be like, okay, God bless. Do you, man, whatever. Uh, me, no, not so much. Thank you very much. No, thank you. No, 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 no. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, uh, going through it right now, let's just say, going through it, going through that journey. And right now, it's not the nicest part. It's it's a process. Uh, I've been on this journey for a while now. If you want to talk about, like, well, what's these, all, what's all these uh, metaphors and, and things that you're talking about? Well, I'm basically talking. Sorry, uh, I'm basically talking about, you know, the waiting, the waiting on, on this process of getting my wife and daughter here. Uh, this has been, uh, now it's been two years, two years and some change since I've been here and, uh, I miss them dearly. I mean, I talk to them every day. I see them every day. Thanks to the magic of technology and FaceTime. I see them every day, but it's not the same. It's not the same. So I miss them dearly. I want them to hear near me. But in the meantime, I have to go through this. I can honestly say right now, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's so hard. Because this is what I feared the most. I mean, this is something I always feared. Uh, I mean, I knew that I would have to do something like this if I ever wanted to come and live here in the States, which I didn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I'll go it, it, to tell that story. That's a whole nother ball of wax. And I'm trying to keep these on the, on the 15 minute mark. So I'm not going to bore you with that story. Let's just say I, there was reasons back then that I thought that it would have been productive. But the, one of the reasons was because I wasn't willing to give up being with my wife and daughter. I wasn't willing to give that up uh, because I cannot. I couldn't imagine at that time my life without them because uh, call me corny, call me whatever, a sap or emotional uh, whatever. Uh, but I love my wife and daughter. I love them to death. They're my world. And I adore them. And maybe they were like an idol to me. You know, and maybe this is God trying to center me and keep a focus more on him. 
then on to my family. Uh, some of you might be listening to this or be like, what are you talking about? Like, what? So there's nothing wrong with missing your wife and daughter. There's nothing wrong with having them place in my heart. And I agree. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, in my life, in my personal journey, in one way or another, God has always been number one. Have I lived that way and showed it 100%? No. No, not really. I've had my doubts. I've had my moments where I like question everything. Questioning why am I going through this? Why I have to go through this? Why do I have to even think about this? Is this what decision is this? Am I doing the right thing? Like I could second guess myself every single step. I question my shadow. But I've gone to the point now that. You know, it's God or bust. It's God or that's it. There's nothing else like I have been stripped to the bone and I've cut all the BS in my life, all the excuses, all the stuff that I used to say no because of this, no because of that, no because no, I can't do this because of this, no, I can't do this because of that. I've been stripped to the bone, I am bare, nothing else to hide. And now it's just do or die now. It's God or bust. And that's where I am right now. That's where I am. Now I'm in a crossroads. Shout out to Cody Rhodes. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, that's where I am right now. So I have to make my mind up. I have to make up a choice now. Not make up. I have to make a choice. Whether I continue this path of trusting God. Or coward away and run away like I've always done before. Like, like when things get tough, run away. When things are difficult, run away. So what am I going to do? Am I going to stay put and trust God even though... Things come rough and tumbling and the wind is blowing and the thunder is striking and all hell is breaking loose, loose, sorry. And despite of all that, keep my resolution, my faith, or just call it like, well, screw this. I'm out of here. <laughs> Take my ball and go home, go back home, go back to DR and forget about all this stupid nonsense that I've built so far like three two years that i've done here of penitence <laughs> to say so to say away and being away from my wife and daughter should i just go back but that's where i've been but i've been pushed some i don't know how to explain it i mean i'm a christian i'm supposed to believe in the all the supernatural stuff but if you know my story, if you've heard these podcasts from day one, I've been pretty honest about my journey into faith. I mean, I lost it. At one point, I lost it. I was, I was, I was like a, an atheist for a good minute, <laughs> some change, and then I refound my faith slowly but surely. Uh, and after that, I've been more analytical. And like suspicious of stuff instead of just going full wholesale. So I'm now like very analytical about what I believe in and whatnot. So at this juncture in my life, I mean, it's been very difficult to go back and reconnect my brain where the faith part is. And for, for me, the faith part is very scary. Because it's the unknown. Like you're going deep into the unknown. And you don't know what to expect. And there was a time in my life that faith was well easy going. I mean I was a kid. I was like a kid. I just oh yeah God is going to do it. Now it's so difficult for me. 
because uh, I have I have been led astray so many times by uh, things that I thought that were God, and it was just B, me BSing myself, and also me following or believing the BS of others. So now, for me to deposit trust, it's like I don't know, but this is what's being asked of me now, and and, and it's not an individual. I'm not listening. I make it a point now not to listen to preachers before I used to listen to a bunch of preachers. I make it a point now not to listen to them. Not because I think they're all full of BS. It's because the ones that I did listen to were full of BS. There were a lot of theatrical BS and whatnot. Uh, and now I'm just trying like, okay, if you're really out there, you are going to deal with me directly. Not through any other people, not throughout outside channels. You, it's just you and me. It's just you and me. Years ago, I did the most dangerous prayer I've ever done in my life, which is I asked God to strip all the bull out of my life. And I wanted a real connection with him. I wanted the real thing. I didn't want religion. I didn't want those same old stories i didn't want the the fantasy the make believe the the pretend stuff i wanted the real thing and boy i don't know if if this is god answering that prayer or i'm just a masochist i don't know what it is but i'm i'm leaning towards more that this is god answering the prayer but not in the way that i wanted it because we make these prayers sometimes and we ask God for things and we think they should go one way. And he's like, well, asking ye shall receive. And it's it goes like the other way around. And you're like, no, no, no that's, this is not what I wanted. And like, no, this is what you prayed for. This is what you prayed for. So I asked for uh, a relationship with God that is devoid of BS. No religion, no religious bull. Just me and him. Now, real trust built on reality, be, built on on real stuff, not pretend emotional crap, but reality. And man, this season that I've been through is <laughs> just that. It's not easy. It's not. I mean, I'm already past the mark that I said I was going to set up for, but it has not been easy. It has not been for the weak of heart. This is not this. This is by far the most difficult thing that I've, I've done, gone through in my life. And I went through my mother's death of cancer, which destroyed me. And it took the grace of God to, to not fully heal me, but make me functional after that and that was pretty rough that i thought that, that that was the hardest thing i've ever been through uh but this is up there man this is taking the cake this is like like right beside it but i'm still breathing i'm still standing quote elton john <laughs> i'm still here so I've done all my part. I've done everything on my end that I know I can do. So I guess all that is left for me is to wait. And that's what I'm going to do. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for being there and listening to this. Me just pouring my guts out. And throwing it out there in the ether. And hopefully. I'm trusting that. In the future this is going to be. Like the focus point where we can go back to listening to this as a reference. And say well he said it then. And look what God did now. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm believing. So thank you again for listening to this husky introverted believer. Episode 2. Take care.